Dr. David Jeremiah in his great book, What Are You Afraid Of?, has the quote, you say the Bible has a name for this, and it's the fear of man. Once we begin chasing approval, we never stop running. It's servitude to a thousand masters. Fear of man is exhausting. It is complicated. It actually is. If you, you know, a pastor is a good illustration of this, <laughs> and you know this as I do. You, uh, you're in the middle of this group of people. All of these people have expectations of you, none of which you are capable of uh, uh, living up to, even if you only had one. And all of a sudden, if you're not careful, you find yourself caught in this quagmire of, well, what if they, well, what if they, I had a man who was fighting me one time in a church and uh, I wanted his approval and I couldn't get it. And he was so uh, abusive. I would go into the pulpit every Sunday and find myself when I stood up to sure. preach, finding that guy. Oh, yeah. And I, I, you know, it was like one day I was in my study and somebody, they had done a church directory and I was dealing with this guy and I just happened to look down at that church directory and by the grace of God, I sat down and I started to leaf through the pages and I found myself thanking God for all the great people that were in my church and asking him to forgive me that I allowed one man exactly. who was after me to keep me from appreciating all the good people who were for me. And isn't it true? I mean, uh, the disappointing person, the loud critic, the the immature person, they they blur you yeah. from all that right. God is wanting to do, right? right? Exactly right. And you know, I found so much encouragement in this that after Peter allowed his overwhelming fear of men to keep him from who, being who he was. He paid a penalty, but isn't it great, Jerry, that God came back at the end of Peter's life and just as he had denied the Lord three times, the Lord reinstituted him three times. Right. Three times the Lord, three times Peter said, I don't know you, and three times Jesus said, do you love me? Right. And what I think that says to all of us, if we've fallen prey, to the fear of rejection and we've allowed the pressure of others to make us do something that we don't want to do and we sin, Almighty God stands there ready to receive us again and to put his arm around us and say, okay, let's start this journey once more. And you know, you're talking to some parents and surrogate parents that are grandparents in so many homes yeah. and they want their kids to like them. And but they've got to be a leader too. That's true. Isn't that the issue we often face? Um, I often say this to uh, people who work with our young people. Look, it's important that they like you, but it's more important that they respect you. Right. Don't give up their respect for their friendship. Make sure you are the person God wants you to be. And ultimately, they'll stand, they'll stand and say, that man changed my life. But the pressure even on the, on the leaders in our churches is often to to compromise the things they should do so they can be accepted by the kids. And that's disastrous as you know. It is, I mean, I, when I came to Christ out of the drug scene, it was the rigidity of the commitment that my aunt put on me that caused me to cleave to her. Yeah. I had already had the excess. Right. Now, just in a final thought, because Cedarville College is quite renowned in the United States. Who would have ever thought that it would have yeah. emerged like it has? It's filled with young ministers and men and women that are going to go in Christian service. If you had a, <clears throat> an epitaph to them of what ministry is going to be and the rejection, mm -hmm. that guy in Pew 3 and Pew 5, and like they taught us in the seminary, generally the person who didn't get in the ministry wants to tell the guy in the ministry how to do it. What would it be? I think, I think more than anything else, what, I, what I've learned over these years is that my relationship with Jesus Christ is the only answer to that challenge. To be honest and say, Lord, if there's something in their criticism that I need to hear, I want to hear it. But, but if it's just the enemy trying to get me off, off, off message, help me to be strong and, and to love these people in spite of the way they treat me and go forward. And I've been through a few battles along the way. I've got some scars to prove it. Sure. But I can tell you this, that... Um, when it's over and you look back, 
you, you see the hand of God even in that. And, and I would just, if, you, if you're going into the ministry because you think it's a, it's a big hurrah party and, and everybody's going to love you, then you probably, you're misinformed and you're, you're in for some real surprises. And we do probably need to tell some laymen they need to be praying for their pastor. Absolutely. Remember Spurgeon said, right. your success, my people pray for me. Right. That's true. We can't do this by ourselves. And, you know, the other thing, I, I have a 30,000 foot view of this now <laughs> because I've, I've done it. And I remember when we were going through some really hard times in the church where we are now, and I didn't know if I was going to get through it or not. And I tell people, you know, the Lord let me stay through the war so I could be there for the party. And the party is right now. What God is doing in the church is such a wonderful experience. And we're so blessed to have these sweet people to talk to every week and see how they respond to the challenges of the Word of God. So rejection's always there. It's always hanging in the corner waiting to come out. And it's not of God. It's, it's of the enemy. And when you sense that and realize how much the Lord really does love you, even as he loved Peter, to reinstitute him. And Peter did his best work after he went through that whole rejection cycle and God honored his life. And he will do that for anyone who will let him take control. The book is entitled, What Are You Afraid Of? It's offered this month and it'll be a great asset to your Christian library and to your, to your future. The telephone number is there and for your best gift, we'll send it to you. More from Dr. Jeremiah in the future. Now stay with us. <music> 